In today's video, we take a look at Boundary Supply's new line of travel bags, namely the Aris backpack, as well as some of the modular accessories, the Stasis Sling, the Rift Pack, and the Field Space 2.0. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ed from Rush Faster, and we do guides and walkthroughs, bringing you better gear and better ways to carry. So if you like what you see, you're interested in this sort of thing, please hit the like button, subscribe, and also subscribe to our newsletter. Let's dive in and check out the Aris backpack, as well as some of the modular accessories. Boundary Supply is a US carry company that's making a name for themselves in the carry world. They have a number of carry collections and they're known for their feature rich, super technical and material savvy bags. Today we're looking at the Aris backpack as well as some of the modular accessories. If you're interested in checking out our other videos on Boundary Supply, you can head over to our channel, click the Boundary Supply playlist or you can just click the link above right now. Another reminder for all of you on the channel, our Rush Faster laptop sleeve is now available for international shipping at rushfaster.co. It's our own laptop sleeve, we're very proud of it. If you want to check it out, link is in the description below. Okay, so let's look at some of the materials of the Aris backpack. Now, the Aris backpack features a 400 denier nylon exterior that has a TPU back coating as well as a DWR face coating for extra water resistance. Now, this 400 denier TPU nylon is Boundary Supply's most advanced textiles, so they're using the best that they have to offer in this Aris pack. One thing to note about the bag's design is that it allows for seam taping, so we'll take a better look at that when we get into the bag. That just adds to the overall water resistance of the bag. On top of that, we've also got water resistant zippers. We have YKK Storm Guard zippers. We've got Wujin hardware for most of the clips, some anodized aluminium for some of the other clips, and then Hypalon throughout the bag. Okay, now as for the branding, we've got small little hints of boundary branding throughout the bag. We've got the boundary apex logo just there on the front. On these little aluminium clips there, we've also got a boundary text mark there. There are small little details on the Hyperlon zipper pulls. There's just a little stud there, again with the boundary apex logo. You'll see all of those small little tasteful aspects throughout the bag when it comes to branding. Now, one of the first things you'll notice about the bag are these four little crosses on the front face of the bag. This is Boundary Supplies 360 lash point system. The 360 lash point system allows you to attach on any clips to any of the four directions on these lash points. So you could clip something downwards, you could clip something upwards, or either side to side or around the bag. This could be good for attaching gear externally on the bag, so maybe a windbreaker, a down jacket, maybe a yoga mat, anything like that, you could attach it with those lash points. But these lash points also serve as mounting points for the other various modular accessories. So you can attach on the stasis sling on the front face of the bag. You can also attach the rift pack on the top of the bag and there are various little mounting areas for you to do that. We'll take a look at the mounting later on when we look at those modular accessories, but the 360 lash points are one of the main modular aspects of the bag that you can add on those other different pieces. So if we just turn to this side of the bag, you'll notice one of those accessory straps there. You get two accessory straps with each Aris pack. They're using aluminium hardware for those clips there, and then we've also got a Wujin plastic buckle there as well. There's some strap management there so you can keep all those little straps nice and tidy. When it's mounted on these positions in the bag, you can actually use these as compression straps just to cinch the bag down, compress its space, keep a slim silhouette. But you can also use it to stabilize gear that you have alongside the bag. So in this side of the bag, we've actually got a large water bottle pocket. It is gusseted as well as elasticized. So you can see that gusset there, elastic webbing here, really large water bottle pocket, more than capable to fit a 32 ounce Nalgene water bottle. See that it's in there really easily. Or if you're taking this bag camping, maybe you're taking a high camp flask with you. Really cool flask here. You can just chuck that in and then you can use the compression strap to actually cinch down the top there just to secure it in place so it doesn't get loose and you can use that just to secure it down. If you're using this bag for travel and photography, you might want to slot a tripod on the side. This compression strap will do perfectly fine to cinch that down as well. Now on the other side of the bag, we don't have that water bottle pocket there. We've still got the same compression strap, the accessory strap there, and then we've got a quick access zipper that gets into the main compartment. We'll take a look at that later on in the video. Another thing that you will notice is there are four hall handles on each side of the bag. So one on this side, there's one on the base, small little grab handle there. On the other side, there is another one. And then obviously at the top, 
there is another grab handle. This makes it really easy for lugging the bag around. You can transport it whichever orientation. You can store it inside an overhead cabin and then take it out very easily. Now, if we turn to the harness system of the bag, this is the Aris Pax harness system. It's a really technical harness system and a super capable harness system as well. On first impressions, it looks really technical, really full on, and for good reason. This is a 35 liter travel backpack and potentially carrying more if you're using those modular accessories on the exterior of the bag. So you want a harness system that will be comfortable and will be able to help you carry all of your gear. So as mentioned, we have hole handles on all sides of the bag and we've got these two thick ergonomically curved shoulder straps here. You can see that it has a really dense foam padding there on the shoulder straps, really thick padding. You can see that padding actually rolls over onto the front sides of the bag. So it just helps with making sure that these shoulder straps don't dig into your chest when you're carrying heavy loads. Those shoulder straps have an air mesh wicking as well so it'll be nice and breathable it'll help with airflow distribution just making sure you don't get as much of a sweaty back as possible at the top of the bag we have load lifters so you can better tweak the curve of the shoulder strap according to your body and there is nice little strap management there to make sure that these straps don't get too dangly moving on from those ladder locks we've also got these two loops here you can add on any accessories carabiners just things to help you attach gear on the shoulder straps. And then further below on the shoulder strap, we've got a little bit of Hyperlon here. On this side, you can see a Boundary Apex logo and then two of these little lash loops here. These are laser cut lash loops that you can attach any gear on. So maybe anything with a clip, this is just an Olight brass torch. Clip that through there just to keep it nice and secure. And over here, we actually have a dock for our sternum strap. So the sternum strap here allows you to stabilize your load when you're carrying it. It utilizes a magnetic fidlock buckle. So really heavy duty buckle, also really easy to use. And when you're not using it, so it doesn't get caught up or tangled or just in the way, you can actually dock it onto that shoulder strap there. Now this is really good in between trips when you just want to take the bag off or when you just don't have a use for the sternum strap at the moment. But obviously if you don't want to use a sternum strap, you can actually take those little parts out and stow it away in the bag or just keep it at home. Speaking of the sternum strap, we actually have four different points of adjustment here for the sternum strap. So you can better align the position of the sternum strap to where it is on your body when you're carrying it. At the bottom of the shoulder straps, we've got a little loop there as well as Wu Jin ladder locks and then some strap management to keep your straps nice and tidy. Now at the bottom here, we've also got a waist belt. This uses a Wu Jin buckle here, very chunky buckle, easy to use. We've got some strap management here just to take care of that strap slack and then two loops on the wings of the hip belt just to secure down the end of the strap. And this is actually also where you'll be pulling to tighten the hip belt. On the inner sides of the hip belt, we've got that same air mesh wicking as we did on the shoulder straps. So good padded spacer mesh there for comfort and it is slightly contoured so it'll wrap around your waist nice and easy. The waist belt is removable so underneath this back panel area here, this lower lumbar area, you can actually remove it via Velcro so you can take that away if you don't want to use it. Moving to the back panel, we have a high tech mesh here. This is Boundary's LFT EVA mesh foam padding. You can see it's perforated, it's got a soft EVA foam padding providing comfort as well as airflow. And then we've also got airflow channeling throughout this whole back panel system as well. So it's a very capable and comfortable back panel padding there. And then another feature of the back panel is that you can actually adjust the positioning of the shoulder straps here. So depending on your frame, your torso, even your height, you can adjust the best position for the shoulder straps so that you can have the best ergonomic fit when you're carrying the bag. So this is Boundary Supplies Quick Adjust Suspension System. It's secured down by Velcro, so very simple hook and loop closure. You simply need to pull up on this top part here to loosen the Velcro, and then you can actually just drag up and down to best position the shoulder straps there. Lots of flexibility and allows you to just tweak the height of the shoulder straps to fit your frame. Now this adjustable suspension will comfortably fit both men and women from heights of five foot four to six foot two. So that's about 162 centimeters to 188 centimeters just by being able to tweak this top part of the shoulder system. Now one more thing you might notice in the harness system here behind all this padding is this composite frame here. It's an ultralight molded composite back panel that provides structure to the entire harness system. It's a lightweight and super strong thermoplastic that has a 
PET face, so it kind of has this carbon fiber look to it, but it actually helps with load distribution as well as having a bit of flex to best fit on your body when you're moving around. So overall, really, really technical back panel system, but very helpful in terms of making the bag comfortable for longer carries. Now, one final thing to note about the back panel system is that it is compatible with airline travel, so it is carry-on friendly, as well as having luggage pass-throughs for rolling luggage. So if you're taking this bag with you and you've got secondary luggage, with a telescopic handle you can actually feed it through these two little loops here to secure the bag down and to make it even more easy you can stow away the shoulder straps just so that these straps don't get tangled up or caught when you're in transit so if you pull up this lower lumbar area here it's secured down by velcro as well just stow those straps down tuck everything inside You're able to lug the bag around without those straps getting caught in the way and then you can also pass through your rolling luggage through these hall handles on the side. Okay, so now that we've got most of the external features out of the way, let's look at the compartments of the bag. Underneath this little flap here, we've actually got a zippered compartment. This zippered compartment uses this entire front panel as dimensions, so you can store a number of things inside there. I've just got my Bellroy travel folio for my passport and other travel documents in there. And then I've got an Arcteryx Noden packable windbreaker, just in case it gets a bit nippy. Now at the top of the bag, we've got Got another zippered pocket again that these are YKK storm guide zippers so very water resistant zippers here and this is actually a big quick access pocket from the top so you can store a fair bit of stuff inside here I've just got a pair of Sunski polarized sunglasses as well as a pair of Knox provisions binoculars and I've even been able to fit some active noise cancelling headphones from Bayer Dynamic. These are the Bayer Dynamic Lagoon headphones, really useful travel friendly headphones. And then here I've also got a Nimble Champ portable battery. If we just turn the bag around you can see inside that compartment we've got another zippered pocket here in the stretch mesh compartment. So we just open that up, we've got space for smaller items. I've got a Bellroy flip case and then I've also got a Somewhere Labs global hotspot. If you are taking this bag on more rural or remote areas, maybe just for more outdoor adventures, it might be good to bring with you a global hotspot that provides 100% global satellite coverage. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below. And then just at the top there, we've actually got a little dock for the Boundary Supply HT key clip. It just uses a simple magnetic fitlock stud there to lock in and you can secure your keys on it. So I've just got my orbit key attached to that. So this front compartment, heaps of space to store items. You can see I stored a whole bunch of things in there in this top access area. Okay, so as we get into the main compartment, we've actually got a clamshell opening here. It's secured down by these chunky YKK Storm Guide zippers. This is actually a kissing zip, so it locks together. You can put a TSA approved lock in there just to secure that down. If we open it up. This is our main compartment area, so we've got space for our laptop on this side, and then we've got space for most of our travel gear on the other. Now just here we have a performance stretch mesh here, and it has two zippered compartments that you can store other items inside. So I've just got an A5 leather workbook from Ugmunk, and then I've also got a Tactica F100 flashlight. Tactica have sponsored this video. They make really unique multi-tools. They've also recently released this F100 flashlight. It's a very minimal flashlight. It's got nice tactile elements as well, and a little magnetic clip here to let you secure it onto wherever you want for multiple versatile use cases. They've recently relaunched on Kickstarter, so if you want to check them out, head over to the link in the description below. Now those are just two stretch mesh pockets here. You'll notice at the top we have a zipper path that goes all the way down here to open up this section, but you can see these two Hyperlon pull tabs here. This allows you to quickly tear away this front section so you can get quick access to that main area. Here I have the Railwen wind zip jacket, really comfortable jacket. And then I've got some packing cubes in here. I've got the large peak design packing cube. Here we have a boundary hemp packing cube. They come in a number of different sizes. This is the small one. There's also a medium and a large. And then the bottom here, we have the boundary LT dry bag. Now this comes with every Aris backpack. So you have a little bit of a dry bag to take with you either for your shoes or your dirty clothes. It's a 10 liter dry bag and it's made of 100 denier HD nylon. It's also got interior seam taping as well, just for extra waterproofness. It's currently cinched up and it uses a magnetic closure here, so very easy to use. 
Inside there, I've got a pair of boots from Naglev. These are really killer boots, super comfortable, and have a really cool look about them. But it's definitely got more space for that, so you can put lots of dirty clothes, maybe even bigger boots if you're just going on a larger expedition with this bag. So here are a pair of all-weather duck boots from our friends over at Huckberry. This can fit inside there as well. So you can just secure that down. If those all-weather duck boots get really dirty or wet, you can just store them inside this bag and keep it nice and dry away from the other travel gear. You'll also notice on the dry bag these little tea toggles. You can actually fit those through these elastic loops here just to secure it on the bag if you wanted to. Another thing you might notice is these little strips of Velcro here. These are actually meant to be used in conjunction with Boundary Supplies camera cubes. So this is the Mark II LT camera cube from Boundary. It'll fit a DSLR and some lenses and it's also got those two strips of Velcro there. So you can line it up there and have camera carry inside the bag as well. Another really useful thing about using this camera cube in the bag is you can zip this part down, the little lid there, and then align it to the side access compartment. So if you zip up that side access compartment we were talking about earlier, you can actually get quick access inside to the camera cube and be able to take a shot really quickly with your camera. So some good usability there and good modularity to have it connected with other boundary supply products. Now, as mentioned, the bag is seam taped, so you can see inside the internals, you can see that seam taping there just to give it a better water protection for your travel gear, just to make sure it doesn't get wet to block out any moisture. And one last thing to note about this main compartment here is the more that you pack that top compartment there with your headphones or whatever you have, you'll be using up a bit of dimension inside this main compartment because that is the lining for that pocket. Now moving on to this side, we have our laptop section. This is a 17 inch laptop sleeve. It's suspended from the ground, so it'll protect your laptop. It's also padded. It's got a nine wool liner there, so it'll be scratch resistant. It'll protect your laptop from any scratches. And then at the very top here, we have a magnetic G hook that hooks into this little closure there. We've actually seen a very similar thing to this on the Bellroy system work bag. So if you're familiar with that, it's the same closure there. This is just a 13 inch MacBook Pro Retina. It'll fit in here very easily. Just eats that up with no problems. Now another thing you'll notice here are these two little studs here. These are Fidlock magnetic studs that are meant to be used with any other Fidlock clips here. So on the Fieldspace 2.0, we've actually got those two little receivers. You can just stick that in there and it'll secure in place magnetically. The Fieldspace 2.0 is just a quick little workstation that you can take with you when you're on the go. So you, if you're carrying laptop and tech essentials, you don't have to take the entire bag with you. You can just store it inside this little mini briefcase and take all your gear with you. So on the left here, we've got some elastic loops here that you can attach pens on. So I've got a pen from Refine. You can stick a little stylus in there as well if you're carrying a tablet. Two little mesh compartments. I've just got a portable hard drive from Lacey. And then at the top here, we've also got some gear. I've got a pair of Jaybird Vista 2 wireless earphones, some Nomad Kevlar charging cables, and also a little power brick. This is the Anker Nano Pro. It actually provides 20 watts of power in this small little mechanism here. Really useful little power brick. On the left here, we've just got a little grab handle that you can use when you're carrying the bag. So you can actually slip your hand through that and carry it as you go. So a really nice little grab handle there. And then at the top here, we have a magnetized closure for a laptop. This will fit up to a 13 inch laptop or a 12 inch tablet. And it's got that same nywall padding in there to protect your laptop from any scratches. And just behind that, we've also got a little document sleeve. So you can fit some papers in there, maybe a little workbook, an A5 workbook, you slot that in there, nice and secure, and you can take this with you. Really useful piece of kit here from Boundary. So once you've got this field space secured on, you've got the top part secured, but the bottom part is not. So you've got this little elastic webbing here that you can wrap around the field space just to keep it in place when it's in transit. Before we get into the modular accessories, the watch from today's video is from MTM. This is the Hypertech H61 timepiece. MTM make watches with a military and tactical aesthetic. This watch has dual bezels as well as a date window, has a really hard rugged construction. If you're interested in checking them out, link is in the description below. Okay, so we've already looked at the Field Space 2.0. This is the Stasis Sling. It's a 15 liter sling bag. It's 
made of similar materials to the Aris backpack. It's made of a 210 denier nylon TPU, so just a slightly lightweight material with the same sort of water resistant aspects as well. It's got a boundary text mark here and then a fid lock closure to secure the main opening. So you just pull up on that toggle to open it up and then we have our main compartment exposed. If we turn to the back of the bag, we have our harness system. So we've got a simple nylon strap here for you to carry it over the shoulder as a sling bag. But you can see that same LFT EVA foam mesh that we saw on the Aris backpack. It's got a nice perforated padding there. It's gonna be really comfortable. And you can see there is a nice grab handle at the top here if you just wanna hang the bag off any hooks. Now, depending if you sling the bag right or left, you can actually change the orientation of that with this gatekeeper clip. So you can secure it on the other side of the bag depending on which way you want to sling the bag around. And you can also stow the strap away, especially when you're in transit, you don't want to get caught on anything, you can actually stow it behind here. Now on the back panel, we have a discrete zippered pocket here. You can zip that open. You can store maybe a wallet or some field notes in there just for quick access. Now at the top of the bag, we've got a zippered compartment. This is for your smaller items and your tech items if you're taking that with you on your carry. We've got two elastic webbings here that you can store a pen or a stylus. I've just got another pen from Refine there. Now in this section here, you're actually able to fit a tablet or a laptop in there. Now it'll be a really tight fit there. So depending on what you pack inside the main area, will determine how easy it is to slip a laptop or tablet inside. But here you've also got a little stretch mess zippered compartment. So I've just got my iPhone 12 in there with a moment case and then my Jaybird Vista 2s. Now if we open our main compartment here, just got another Stormguard YKK zipper. I've got my sunglasses, my binoculars. I've also got a Lark self-purifying water bottle there and then my Relwen windzip jacket. So that's our main cavity there. You'll notice a little pass through that you can actually get into that other back compartment. So if you have a charging cable, you might want to store something in there and charge it. You could do that if you wanted to. But yeah, just one big space for all your everyday essentials. Next up, we've got the Rift Pack. Now this is another sling bag. It can also be used to wear around the waist as well. It's smaller than the Stasis sling though. It is a 3.5 liter pack. So you won't be able to store as much as you can in the Stasis. It's got two zippered compartments. At the back, it's got that same perforated back panel, so still comfortable. And it has a simple Wujin buckle here to secure on the waist or around the shoulders. Now, similar to the Stasis sling, you can actually stow away the carry strap. So if we just undo these stud buckles here and this Velcro, and here you can see all the straps that allow it to secure onto the Aris backpack. But we'll just store all this behind there first and we'll look inside the compartments. So if we take a look at the compartments here on the top, small quick access compartment, just got wireless earphones in there. Not too much space in that top pocket, but good for quick access. And then here we have our main compartment. I've just got my windbreaker, sunglasses, portable battery, charging cables, and then also the Tactica flashlight. You also notice here a little performance mesh pocket there for small items. I've just got my iPhone 12 with a moment case. And then at the top here, we've got a little loop that you can secure a set of keys on there if you want as well. So very simple sling bag. It's got the same material set as the Stasis sling, a 210 denier nylon TPU material, storm guide zippers, all the rest of it, and a very comfortable back panel. Okay, so attaching the modular components to the bag is fairly straightforward. As mentioned, they use the 360 lash point mechanism here. And each modular component has those little clips that allow you to lash them onto those points. So on this side of the bag, we've just got to clip them on. So that is the stasis sling attached to the front of the bag like so via those little lash points. The rift secures on the top here and underneath that little velcro section, you can actually pull out the attachment clips. Now the rift is slightly different on one of the parts. It actually has these simple buckles that secure on and so you're gonna to have to match them up with the buckles on the top of the bag here. Hopefully you can see that. It's not impossible, but it is a little bit finicky and it's just something that you'll get used to over time as you clip them on. And then here, it's fairly straightforward. You've got those same clips there. Lash them onto those points there at the front. Just clipped on, you can cinch that down a bit so it's nice and secure. 
and then we have those two modular components attached onto the bag, making it very easy to lug one bag around instead of all three separately. Now, as mentioned, attaching them on is fairly straightforward, but detaching them can sometimes be difficult, especially at the top points here where we have three clips attached to the same 360 lash point. It does require a little bit of jostling and a little bit of elbow grease to get it out sometimes. But again, this is just one of those new mechanisms that over time you will get used to. Well, everyone, there you have it. The Boundaries Apply Aris Travel Backpack, as well as some of the modular accessories that go with it. Overall, a very impressive collection that works really nicely together. They're made of high quality blue sun approved materials, lots of good features and have a nice uniform aesthetic. If you're interested in getting any of these pieces or any of the other products that you've seen in this video, there are affiliate links in the description below. If you use those links, they go a long way to support the work that we do here. So we really appreciate that. And if you wanna support us further, hit the like button, hit the bell, subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to the newsletter. But most of all, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this bag? What do you think about the overall collection and how they work together? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos from us, check out some of the links on the screen at the end of this video. But for now, this has been the Aris Pack as well as some of the modular accessories from Boundary. Take care and we'll see you next time.